Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how I created the flourishes that I posted recently on my blog. I used Inkscape and I used the Bezier tool icon which is here. So I'm going to jump straight in and show you how I did it. So first of all you choose the Bezier tool. When you choose it you get two options up here under mode. You want this one, this curly one that's called the Spyro path tool so you need to select that and then you have options here I'm going to use triangle in at the moment and I'll show you triangle out and then you can play with the others but basically once you've got the pen on the end of your cursor you need to left click and then you need to click and drag and just drag out shapes and just keep clicking and then when you get to the end you right click to set your shape so I'll just do that again. So you left click, drag, left click, left click, keep, keep clicking and dragging until you get a shape and right click at the end. So you do have to play with these before you start doing your flourishes. Um, once you're happy with something that resembles something along the lines of what you want, then you can edit it further. So we'll start with this one going to close that down for a minute okay so I'll move this one out of the way and we'll start with this one so once you've got your shape you go path path effect editor and that brings up this window and then you don't need to worry about any of the things at the top it's under this section here that says current effect where it says width this is the width here that your machine will cut when you convert this in canvas so I'm going to change this to six and you can see how it's got fatter and I'm going to come over here to the edit paths node icon and then it, it exposes the nodes and I'm going to just start dragging them out and you can bend them however you like. I'm going to move them along a little bit, I'm going to make this smaller. You want the boxes. The boxes are the ones that control the bend and the ones with the circles on here affect the arc of the bend if that makes sense. And then if you click and push the boxes or diamonds up and down they move the line up and down but you can also move them right and left to affect how your path looks. And then I'd just say while I'm while I'm here down at the bottom I've got my fill selected it doesn't really matter whether you have the stroke on or not if you want the stroke on you click and just choose black and then you've got both black and on stroke and fill so if you haven't got those just right click on either one see I can remove the fill so it now looks like an outline or right click and choose black and put the fill back in okay so that's that now I'm just going to work on this because it doesn't look very good in fact I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this section come back up here to the node editing and then just try and bend these out a bit more and see what effect we get drag these out a little bit and you can move them about to get more of a of a curve. As I say, you do have to play with these before you actually start your designing. There you go, that's looking a little bit smoother now. I'll go back to. Okay, so we've got something like that. So now. <clears throat> We can, while it's selected, we can right click and duplicate it and bring the duplicate down here. Now we may want to resize it, so if we hold the control key down and drag in, when we let go, because this one was set to six, even though we've resized this, this one will still be showing as a width of six. So while it's selected, if you come over here and change it to three and enter, it will make it a bit thinner for you. And then we can choose to maybe place this on here. So while it's selected, click again and you get the rotate handles and we can rotate it. 
we're eventually going to weld all this together so all our shapes need to overlap and if you're not sure how they look go to view display and normal and that will show you where you've placed your shape and then you can go back to normal view to see how it's going to look because effectively the, the, the what you see on the screen as the filled in color will represent your card so that's that then we might want to duplicate this again and then use the icon up here to flip it and then we might want to shrink it down again and rotate it and then while it's selected if we go back over here to the node editing you can see the edit points and we can maybe move this down a bit move this one over a bit click off it see how that looks I don't like that so I'm going to remove that so what I'm going to do I'm going to rotate it round the other way and I'm going to position it up here and while it's selected and still rotated I can move it around and then select on the nodes and I can drag this out to kind of make it join in on there to weld so we've got that I could decide I want to stretch this out maybe make it a little bit bigger go back into outline mode to see how things are lining up again okay this one we can see what we can do with this one go to the node might make this one smaller try and smooth out the nodes a little bit you can get rid of nodes as well so there's one here right on the end if I just zoom in on this a little bit more and go to the node you can see this one here so if I select it and come up here and hit the delete that will delete that select that one and delete it and then I can bring these in a little bit more see how it looks might want to move these in not have it so far apart give it a little bit more of a, a nice curve bring that one in bring that one around so you do have to play with it just come back out see how that one looks now I might want to hold my control key down and shrink that down a little while it's selected I'm going to make it three and then I could maybe put that one up there shrink it down a little maybe and then while that's selected I might duplicate it and rotate it and then maybe put it up here something like that might select this main one again and drag this out a little bit more okay then what I did with the leaves and shapes and things um, went back to the Bezier tool chose the mode and chose none and then I clicked and dragged and clicked and then click back up here to join it together now uh, while it's selected you can see there's no fill so I'm going to right click and choose black just because I prefer that view while I'm working with these and I can drag the sides out I can move these over a little bit more And then select it then I can hold the control key down and I can shrink it down and then I'm going to rotate it and click and drag and I may want to put one there select it 
duplicate it. While it's selected, click on it again to rotate. Click on it and select it. Put that one there. Then another thing I did was I put little bump outs on the ends of the flourishes. So once you, oh, I'll show you something else first. And then I did um, another show. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I created the little leaves. So we're back to our Bezier tool. We need mode rather than spiro. So we need to click up, select mode and then we need none. And then we're just going to click and drag a shape out. Okay, then we're going to select it. While it's selected, we're going to double click to expose the nodes. And we want to select all these nodes here except the top one. So we drag an imaginary box around all those bottom nodes and you'll see they've all turned blue. And the top one isn't because we didn't select it. While we've got those, we come up here and we come to this icon here that looks like an arc with a blue square in the middle. And when you hover over it, it says that you make the selected nodes symmetrical. So we're going to click on that and that's rounded out the nodes for us now. I'm going to click the top one and just drag it a little bit. And then again, only clicking on the boxes or the diamond shapes if there are any for now. Just going to drag these circle handles in because that's moving the boxes in a way I don't want them to move. Drag this round to make them smoother. Drag this one in. You do have to play around with these. It's not something that I can... And if you get something odd like that, grab on the circles that are on each side of your box and that will adjust how the box reacts, if that makes sense. It's going to drag out something a little bit rounder. See how this looks. Might not be perfect, but as I say, you do have to play with it. I'm going to select, select it. I'm going to come down here and I've got no fill on, so I'm going to right click and choose fill because I sometimes find that they look better when they've got a fill in and you can work on them a little bit better. And I'm going to zoom in and round off these nodes a bit. And you can see if you drag the lines in with the circles, they affect how the nodes work. And because I'm zoomed in now, and I've enlarged the view, it's just taking a little bit longer to work on the screen. I'm just going to zoom back out again. Let's have a look at that. It's not pin. Manipulate it a little bit more. See how that looks. Now, it's not perfect, but for the, for the purposes of the video, you get a, a rough idea of what I'm after. While it's selected, I'm going to hold the control key down and shrink it down. And then I'm going to drag it up here and I'm going to put it on the end of one of these curly chins. So I'm going to zoom in again, select it, select it so I get the rotate handles. And I'm just going to move it into place and then zoom back out and have a look. And then the other ones I did were like little bump outs on the end. But you, before you do those, you have to make sure you're happy with your shape. Now, this is not the greatest flourish in the world. But again, as I say, I'm showing you the technique rather than how to actually produce an exact replica. So what I want to do is put something on the end of this, which is the main stem. So I'm just going to select the main stem and I'm going to go to path, object to path. And then I'm going to go to outline display for this. And then I'm going to click on the nodes and that exposes these nodes. And then all as I did with those was I click on a node and you just drag out a section. Again, you might have to zoom in. So click on the nodes, expose the nodes, but, 
but it's a different kind of node editing this this is when you do you have to do path object to path to do this so this has to be one of the last processes that you do really you may have to adjust sometimes you get nodes that twist around and you and odd things happen sometimes it's easier if you click one and try and delete it and see if that makes any difference then I can bring this arm in so I've created this kind of bump out and if I go back to normal view and filled in you'll see and then click off it see I've got this little bump out and that's how you do that so once you're happy with everything, you have to go and select everything. And when it's all selected, and you've got quite a bit of editing there, so you just do have to give the software a bit of time to work with everything. You go path, object to path, and then you do path, union, and that should weld it all. And then to check, if you go to view, display, outline, you'll see that's all built, been welded together. So that would be how your shape would cut from card or whatever. One thing I would say um, if you're doing this, try and design to the size that you want the flourish to be. Because So that's how to do your flourishes using the Bezier tool with Spyro okay now you may want a matting layer for that so just quickly before um, I end the video while it's selected if you right click and choose duplicate and that puts a duplicate directly on top I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to choose this red I'm going to right click on red and choose set the fill and I'm going to right click and set stroke and then that will now have a red one on top of the original black one so I'm just going to undo that and just have the red one selected. While the red one's selected, I'm going to go to Path, Dynamic Offset, and it gives us one node here. And if you left click and drag on that node, it will make this bigger. Now I'm going to come over here and select it. So it's still the top red one that's selected. That Dynamic Offset might be too much, but we'll have a look in a minute. I'm going to click on this icon here and send it to the back. Okay, so that would be how you would create a matting layer if you wanted to mat and layer your flourishes. So if I click off it and then click on the, the black one, and drag the black one, black one out of the way, you can see I could cut the red one, say, in red card and the black one in black, and then I could layer them up on top of each other. Out of the way. If I want, and then just quickly going back to the spiro, and we had triangle in that created this shape. If you use triangle out and do the same thing, left click and drag, and left click and keep clicking, and right click when you get to the end, and you have a look, you'll see with the triangle out option, you start off with nothing at the end and it goes fatter towards the middle whereas with triangle in on this first one it starts off with the fatter end and goes down to nothing so you can get different effects depending on what you choose here